Life and Lenses of vintage paneled style dresses. Um, so hello Natalie, thank you for joining me. Very late, very very late at night. Here it's the middle of the day. I've had all morning we had sports day at school, so I'm slightly hot. Um, so it's nice to be in the cellar to look at some vintage fashion with you. And I'm gonna switch over the camera in a second, but I thought I'd let you quickly know what panel dresses are. And today I'm just gonna look at designs and sort of talk about how panels can have very different final sort of style lines, but they're all used to the same drafting principles, but it's just different amount of ease, different amount of style lines and so on of panels. Um, if you want to actually learn how to draft um, panel dresses, tomorrow on the membership we've got a tutorial on how to turn your basic um, bodies or skirt block or how to um, turn your dress block into a panel style and why if you need panels and why panels are lovely because you get a dress without a waist seam. And well, I'm wearing a typical shirt dress with a waist seam and that always cuts the body in half and of course that's really lovely for example if you have a fitted bodice and a wide skirt or you know even minus or slightly oversized um, you can have lots of fun with it but sometimes it's actually quite nice to have a design where you just have these vertical lines um, so we're going to have a look at some designs to do just that and then I've also found some designs where we do some really nice flat styles which would also work really well on your six panel skirt for example if you've made that from one of my youtube youtube tutorials here are some really nice ideas of adding extra volume and stuff and hello rebecca i just saw your message pop up and i just realized i haven't got my computer so i will just check the messages for chat from time to time and um, because it just sort of pops up and disappears oh yes do please give me a thumbs up as usual always very much appreciate it. I'm gonna now um, turn over the camera. There we go. So these are the sort of styles I'm talking about and I've collected, I've chosen quite an eclectic mix and of course you might now say, Charlotta, this is actually not a panel dress. You might see this is a dress with darts and you're completely right, but it's the same method. And I chose this, I think it's just a really elegant um, vintage dress, but can you see, you have no waist seam, but what the panels or darts allow you is to get a really fitted style. Um, so I'm gonna show you the opposite now, so you know what I'm talking about. So, so the opposite would be something like, this which is like a skimming dress and you can see on that one we've only got one panel or even that would be even more that's like a more or less straight dress um so but whether you have add more ease and sort of ignore your waist shaping or if you actually add more panels the rule is general the more panels you have the better your shaping can be and um, this is a great example so can you can see here there's one the center front seam is actually a shaping seam and we've got our middle seam for shaping and then a side seam and um, so the more side and um, vertical seams going down the body you have the better you can shape it there's another example here again um this has lots of panel interestingly enough it looks like this one has a waist seam but i don't think it is i think that's like something underneath it maybe um i'm not quite sure but you don't need a waist seam but you can see, again see your center front seam you got your bust shaping seam and then you've got another seam in between so an extra seam for even better shaping and that's of course similar to the one i showed you first of all where you have the fingers aren't working can you see here you've got your center front and your center back seam for shaping then you got two more darts for shaping it could be seams of course and then you got your side seam for shaping and that will give you a really fitted start and it's also fantastic if you're very curvy and um, because this sort of works like a double french dart or a double seam um, so they distribute the volume so instead of having one wide dart you end up um, 
this narrower dart and you can sort of distribute the volume more so it's all about if we draw out a just a basic star i'm going to just sort of draw a really basic star and i've got a cold so if i cough i apologize um we've got a heat wave and i've got a cold so it's like very well timed but i hope you're having a good day or middle of the night or morning time i think rebecca it must be really early in the morning if you're the californian rebecca um i know there's english rebecca as well well, thank you very much for coming so that's sort of your normal fit with a style like that we actually add the extra shaping so it becomes more fitted but that extra shaping that's a really wonky drawing the extra shaping isn't just by the side seams it's also these two darts or of course instead of darts you can also have more panels you could have a seam here and then for example another seam there or you could for example then have no side seam and have two seams there so you can really have fun with shaping and getting the fit without a waist seam so why i love these sort of styles and the contrast if you look at one of the looser styles if you look at um this one for example actually that's a bit more complicated because it's got a gusset sleeve and um, if you look at this one this is a contemporary chloe um poplins or cotton dress for 2000 i think australian dollars um but not a bad price is it but on here you can see red style i always have to double check but there isn't a waist seam there i might have a waist seam because okay i'm going to talk about this dress in a second because that's a construction issue rather than a drafting issue let's look at this vintage style um, and i'm going to tell you why the chloe one has a Base steam in a second. You feel free to um, guess in the chat why you think the Chloe dress has one. It's to do with construction. And I just saw another message. Oh, hello, Marie. Hello, good. Oh, well, good afternoon to Nigeria. You're a little bit ahead of me, aren't you? So I have to set my lunch. So you could say it's early afternoon. So in this dress, you can see the fit is probably similar in the bust area, maybe a little bit looser. But then it becomes more like this. It becomes skimming rather than fitted. And then of course it only has got the one. Actually this is a really clever design because it's got the one seam. And can you see that seam is probably the bust point is here. So that seam if I doff in my bust out or my bust point. This seam is something like that. And then this actually has a, this sort of lovely yoke style, which is, I think, why I actually chose it. This is actually a um, Dior dart. So it has a little bit of shaping in this seam, which is also, of course, a really nice design detail. This the um, sort of grown on neck. So you can see how you can really change the fitting, but all of them have in common that we haven't got a waist seam on the dress. And... Now we've gone to the th two main differences in it. Let's quickly talk about why something like the Chloe dress would have a seam. Um, where is the Chloe dress? This one. And I always ap I apologize, white clothes are really tricky to see on the screen. Um, but can you see? Mm -hmm. There's a seam here. And the reason it's not actually for fit or it could be, but more likely is if you have long panels like that, um, they can actually be quite wasteful. Um, so if you if you're laying out your fabric and you're making a thousand of these, it's cheaper to add a waist seam. And also, of course, they caught in that frill there. So all what this frill is. So if that's our dress. And again, if you make this your own for your who knows anyway. I hope I'm actually gonna I'm watching myself now on my computer. So let's have a look whether I can see how far I got. Because I was just talking about the Chloe dress. Um, joys of trying to do things in real lifetime. Um, what if I draw out? 
Yes, I can see. Great. Sorry about this. Yeah, so you basically lost the Chloe explanation. I apologize about that. And um, what I was saying before I got cut off is that Chloe, they ice, icing they basically used at the base seam to center the ruffle and make things easier. But this ruffle is a really nice idea. So if we now move to different designs. Oh, and hello Eva, yes, I'm back. And hello Erin as well, I didn't see you earlier. So thank you so much everybody for being patient and staying with me. It's always a bit of a ride, technology. But what um, I wanted to look at, because um, at this, I think Eva will like it, because with Eva we always have a discussion on the membership about how to make things fit for curvy styles, and these styles are all really good for that. Um, Raffles like that are really nice because you can put them everywhere. So you can also put them in your skirt. Um, but some of the designs, and I sort of cover one of them a little bit tomorrow in the tutorial, is this one. Um, you can see I've got all the style lines here. <laughs> and hello again, Rebecca. Um, but what's really good fun is if you if you use your style lines like that, so this with a normal dress, of course, this would look like if you were drafted, you always drafted like that, wouldn't you? Or and I would as well, you know. So that's why I think this style is really interesting. So instead of having that sort of style, which is quite Marilyn Monroe, I think, um, and then when you wouldn't actually need any seams, you would have this as a completely single piece if you wanted. And um, what's nice about here is that instead of having that sort of top part, middle part, bottom part, with a panel dress, it becomes much more flowy and it becomes more organic. Do you agree? So it's more of sort of more, it can still be really fitted, but I think it works better with the body um, because it doesn't sort of cut us into parts. So there we go, all these seams sort of flowing with the body. Actually, I'd love to know, are you fans of panel dresses? I know Erin said she is. Um, but what's nice about stars like that is you can have just, you could just have, so if I draw on, I don't want to go on, full, on half scale. If I, I'm going to use my pattern for tomorrow. If this is my skirt part, you can see, that's my center front, that's my waist seam I no longer have. You can of course have a fitted dress, which would look roughly like this beauty. So that's really fitted. But it has the volume really beautifully distributed. So that would be something like that, and you can do seams or darts. But I think all the fun starts when you actually add volume. So this is where you can use the six um, panel skirt construction as well, just to add panels. And Rebecca is saying she made a dress like this when it was so comfortable. Yeah, I, I think they just because it doesn't do that nipping in the waist where you then have. I always think you have a skirt hanging off the waist there as well. What's great about this dress is that each panel sort of is just, it hasn't got a hanging point on the waist. And Natalie is saying, I love my printer seams. Yes, there's lots of print printer seams. I think sometimes printer seams are sort of looked down upon, but I think they're actually really, they're very popular for a reason because it's really versatile and they look great. <laughs> And Eva is saying, I'm trying to break free from my addiction to gathered skirts. Well, there's some very nice ideas for you here, Eva, which I think you'd like. And Erin is saying, I have a short waist, so I prefer sheets with panels to get a close fit. Yes, and that's actually quite true, but um, it's these ones, but fitting is differently. So it's like, um, that's actually, I hadn't thought about, about height as well. Um, but basically, what, rather than having a separate top and bottom, and then, you know how we always have a curve, so you basically really distribute your fitting. You can see I've done some of it for our tutorial tomorrow. Um, but what I like about this is that you have the skirt parts. You can then add lots of volume, so it becomes, rather than, if I put thing here, and I'm just gonna draw it out. I'm thinking about, I think this would be a nice add-on tutorial to the six panel skirt on YouTube. So if you'd like that, we can sort of play around with basically how to make add volume to panels. So this is your panel and of course they all might look differently. Um, 
Um, but what you can start doing is, so if you don't want to have a gathered skirt, of course you can move out like this. And then it basically becomes like a circle skirt, but it's again, it's split up. So it's, um, I love circle skirts, but sometimes, you know, when the print, it can sort of a bit like, the, sometimes you want to cut up a print um, to work better. So if you have um, a circle skirt, the print would sort of be all over like that. With a panel skirt, you can actually be really measured and have the print cut up on purpose which sort of breaks it up and make it makes it look, look less flat so you can have fun with that and it makes a real design difference and um eva is saying erin do you get compliments for your long legs yeah i always because i have got a long waist so yes it's like it's weird because erin you should just say i've got really long legs because i always say i have a long waist is a nice way of saying i've got very short legs not very short but shortish um, but we so so this is this first option so that's just a really nice flared skirt which I think would be nice but then I found lots of fun options I wanted to show with you that's quite basic actually yeah, I've added a nice sort of little trail at the back but I like this one there's quite a few of those where you basically have your <coughs> <coughs> so Ava might like this one because this is a mixture um, of um, a flared skirt and a gathered skirt or uh, well, sort of different amounts of volume so Eva might like that um, so you can see this basically has the flare already going out well, I think it has a flare because can you see how much beautiful volume is there but then it's also got a pleat so you start adding lots of volume at the bottom but you can sort of quite control it at the top because of course you don't have to start the pleat at the waist and they haven't done it they've sort of started it maybe at the hip level like down here so many even more can you see and so it's on it like that and then you got the pleat and then you fair and then this is probably gets sort of stitched together here um so you don't have too much volume and it probably gets stitched into the under into the lining um And Natalie is, oh, Erin is saying, it, I guess it does make my legs look longer, so that's always good. And Natalie is saying, is it a pleat at the seam of the skirt? I will have a look. Oh, Natalie, were you talking about, I think you were talking about, were you talking about this one, Natalie? I'm just trying to see where we have a pleat at the seam of the skirt. And Erin is saying, I get lost in circle skirts because I'm tiny. I love this flare style. Said, yeah, that's quite true. I get it with certain styles. Um, I think you have, there's different, like, there's different designers or different styles which suit certain body types, which is great because once you know that, you can get your right style. Did um, Natalie like this one? Or, yeah, this definitely has like a seam here, which is really nice for an extra pleat. But this one hasn't got a seam, I think. Oh, I already mentioned it. That's fantastic. Good. Sometimes, sorry, it's a problem. Is that I think the comments are like delayed by a minute. But yeah, so this is a really nice way of, again, controlling volume. So not all the volume starts from the waist. It sort of is, it's nearly like, you know, like a layered skirt so this is the same so you've got a certain amount of volume here so it's actually quite not fitted but it's more maybe a line there and then you suddenly get a lot more volume from your hip down and um, so you can really be quite nuanced with how much volume you add with these styles which are why i think they're really great and um to draft any of them you can either use a tutorial from the membership there's also a master class on just the dress bodice basic how to actually make your skirt and bodice into a dress block but of course if you're just drafting by yourself you can just um, start with your bodice block and then if a flared style all you do is you just use a six panel um, tutorial from YouTube and um, which is on my channel and just then add the flare you want to get different looks um, this one is the same. So this one is the same as the last one, but can you see, I think there, 
if you look carefully there the flare actually the pleat actually goes all the way to the waist but it's not as steep as you can see it's sort of more like a little bit extra but this looks like it's a lot extra um and natalie saying all these styles would use volume at the waist rather than a gathered skirt yes so that's why i quite like them as well because i sometimes i like a gathered skirt but it's quite a gathered skirt again it's a bit like this it's where you have a next page <laughs> Like a gathered skirt is always like this, isn't it? Like it's full on. And then of course, with most gathered skirts is a straight skirt. And of course you can also do a gathered circle skirt, which is very glamorous. Um, but all the volume is like quite, it's a statement. It goes from fitted to big. But this again is you can go more, it's like, I think it's sort of quite organic. It's like a body shape, isn't it? You can be more that you have it fitted and then in a way your volume only starts at the at the hip. So you can really be careful with where you will you want him to start. And I think she wants she did quite a lot of it for Audrey Hepburn. And this hit with her because she was so um so that gamma and she's so, so like a doe, isn't she? Um so slender, but you he really accentuated that body shape. Which again, like that wouldn't suit me, for example, because I've got a long waist. Um, but just so slightly for me to lower it from the waist to maybe my upper hip really works for me. So it's sort of knowing what works for your body shape um, and what doesn't. But they're really great little tricks to experiment with. And this one is, for example, this one I like because it's less flared. But what's really nice about this one is that again, You've got your fitted, God, sorry, I can't draw today. This was an awful drawing. Um, you got your fitted sort of dress. And again, this got a waist seam. I'm not sure why I wouldn't put a waist seam in there. And actually, this is a really good point. Whenever you're looking at stuff like that, if something doesn't make sense for you, you don't have to do it. Like there's a waist seam there. So if you copy saying, you might suddenly doubt yourself saying, oh, do I need to put a waist seam in? Why do I have one? And then I always, you know, you start doubting your own knowledge because you think, oh, people know better. But how often it's actually do is fabric usage, all sort of different things. So you, if you draft and make your own clothes, you can do it exactly how you want to. There's no, you know, there's no sort of, <coughs> there are certain rules which make life easier, but there's a lot of suggestions as well. Which you don't have to do and of course if you don't break the rules you never know why you have them as well sometimes you have to break them to actually work out oh yes i really do need a dart there um what's really nice about this one this is a hybrid so the front is actually straight from here to here but then they've just added the gathers here um i'm just thinking whether they've done the they've done a seam there so you'd either have to gather the whole thing or that's why I might have done a seam. There you go. Sometimes when you actually go through it, you might actually work out why there's a seam because there's a little bit of a gather. Um, but of course, if you didn't want the seam, what you could do is actually only sort of add a bit of volume there or just add a pleat at the side. So rather than having pleats all the way around, you could just have your pleats at the sides. Um, flared is always a bit trickier because that might sort of distort the volume but instead of the flares there you could easily have I'm just going to draw this off center but you could have like a sort of straight panel here I think she got a really nice dress like that but it's sort of quite straight here and then you can just have sort of pleats like for example only a pleat in this one so you can really sort of think about where you want your volume to be, how big you want to do it. And Natalie saying, are there bows or pockets? Oh, you clever woman, Natalie. You think you're right, this could be a pocket hidden. But I don't know how you would... It's definitely a bow, but it's a strange bow. Let me have a look at the other side of it. This is why I love these as well, because I love eyes are better. Mm. 
I'm not sure. It could be a pocket at the side. Don't think there's a pocket at the top, which is what I thought first. And I think there's something happening underneath the bow. There's either the seam there and then the gathers. But can you see what's weird as well? Here it looks like the seam is going like that. And then suddenly the seam is higher up. So that's like a it's sort of a slightly strange drafting technique. I'm not sure that I would do it like that. And Natalie saying maybe there's a snap behind the bow to close the pocket. Oh, that'd be really nice. Or it could be like, um, so this is where you can start designing. So if that's our, um, draw a bit bigger, to make sure. So that's our armhole, our shoulder, and then this is our side seam. Then we've got one dart here. We've got our princess seam. One day I will do beautiful drawings, but not today. <laughs> and our center front seam. So it looks like here we've got a seam here. And then it looks like the seam is slightly higher up. And then it could be actually that this is, is this all one part? Oh yeah, so then there's no seam below. And then it does look like there should there could be like a pocket in there. So the pocket could be in there and the gap is on top. And that would actually be a really good pocket um, because this is, I think, something Trisha and I, did we talk about life on air? I think we did on our last YouTube live. And um, But how, how pockets are best when they're anchored. So this would be a really usable pocket because you would anchor it into the waist seam here. You have the opening from the side seam and then you can also anchor the front of your pocket into the seam here so it's a really it's a pocket which is anchored on one two and then three sides so it's a really stable workable pocket so that's a really good idea even if it didn't have it um eva i would definitely add it so these are the more this, um styles i also actually they're all on pinterest i will put the pin in the description um but i found some really nice ones like even here you can see here we've done a mixture again, like on the flared skirt, and then these are they're very busy designs. But you can see here we've done like a weird panel. I'm not actually sure I like it, but it's interesting. Um, so I will they're in a in my Pinterest folder, so I will share them with you. But um, there are lots of really nice designs. But these are my thoughts on panel dresses for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're in the membership, this tutorial on like an sort of how to make panel seams work for your fit and why they're a great method to learn. Um, you can join me for that tomorrow. And oh, actually, Aaron is just looking at asking a great question Would you ever utilize boning in these styles? Um, you definitely could if you look at stars like that you could imagine bone boning being in there couldn't you like not sort of super hard boning but quite a soft style would be really nice in there not your whale fish bones um, and actually i think that style for example you could do boning or you could actually do a power net lining so it really sort of um supports this style um which is like i always think that's like a power net is like a um, or power mesh is like a slightly gentler version of a corset but that would definitely work that's a really good idea and of course you haven't got the waist seam with that and um thank you so much everybody joining me um thank you natalie for the suggestions and eva as well it's a pocket that was fantastic and thank you jen i didn't um thank you for joining me as well and um bye rebecca as well and enjoy the rest of your day everybody or your whole day and of course also bye marie thank you so much for joining me everybody and um actually i'll be back tonight because like um this trisha on instagram we will have a shared life with special guests so i hope you do join us there if it works for you otherwise enjoy the rest of your day bye